If life starts approximately a billion years ago, we will have to wait 400,000 years to see the aberration of the first nerve cells. This is where life as we know it begins. Brains in formation of only a few milligrams. It's not possible to determine any sign of intelligence yet. It acts more as a reflex. One neuron, you're alive. Two neurons, you're moving. And with movement, interesting things begin to happen. Animal life on Earth goes back millions of years, yet most species only use three to five percent of its cerebral capacity. But it isn't until we reached human beings at the top of the animal chain that we finally see a species use more of its cerebral capacity. Ten percent may not seem like much, but it's a lot if you look at all we've done with it. Now let's discuss a special case. The only living being that uses its brain better than us, the dolphin. It is estimated that this incredible animal uses up to 20% of its cerebral capacity. In particular, this allows it to have an echolocation system that is more efficient than any sonar invented by mankind. But the dolphin did not invent the sonar, it developed it naturally. And this is the crucial part of our philosophical reflection we have today. Can we therefore conclude that humans are concerned more with having than being? Let's imagine for a few moments what our life would be like if we could access, let's say, 20% of our brain's capacity. This first stage would give us access to and control of our own body. Sir? Yes? Has it been proved scientifically? Well, for the moment, it's just hypothesis, I confess. But if you think about it, it's troubling to realize that the Greeks, the Egyptians, and the Indians had notion of cells centuries before the invention of the microscope. And what to say about Darwin, whom everybody took for a fool when he put forth his theory of evolution. It's up to us to push the rules and laws and go from evolution to revolution. <laughs> 100 billion neurons per human, of which only 15% are activated. There are more connections in the human body than there are stars in the galaxy. We possess a gigantic network of information to which we have almost no access. Sir? Yes. And what would be the next stage? Well, the next stage would probably be control of other people. But for that, we would need to access at least 40% of our brain's capacity. After control of ourselves and others, would come control of matter. But now we're entering into the realm of science fiction, and we don't know any more than a dog who watches the moon. Excuse me, sir? Yes. But what would happen if, for some reason, we ignore somebody unlocked 100% of the cerebral capacity? 100%? Yes. I have no idea. They say we only use a fraction of our brain's true potential. Now, that's when we're awake. When we're asleep, our mind can do almost anything. Such as? Well, imagine you're designing a building, right? You consciously create each aspect. But sometimes it feels like it's almost creating itself, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah like I'm discovering it. Genuine inspiration, right? Mm -hmm. Now, in a dream, 
Our mind continuously does this. We create and perceive our world simultaneously, and our mind does this so well that we don't even know what's happening. That allows us to get right in the middle of that process. How? By taking over the creating part. Now this is where I need you. You create the world of the dream. We bring the subject into that dream, and they fill it with their subconscious. How could I ever acquire enough detail to make them think that it's reality? Well, dreams, they feel real while we're in them, right? It's only when we wake up that we realize something was actually strange. Let me ask you a question. You, you never really remember the beginning of a dream, do you? You always wind up right in the middle of what's going on. I guess, yeah. So how did we end up here? Well, we just came from the, uh... Think about it, Ariadne. How did you get here? Where are you right now? We're dreaming. You're actually in the middle of the workshop right now, sleeping. This is your first lesson in shared dreaming. Stay calm. <laughs> just a dream, is it? And a face full of glass hurts like hell when you're in it. it feels real. That's why the military developed dream sharing. It was a training program for soldiers to shoot and stab and strangle each other and then wake up. give you one piece of advice. Be honest. He knows more than you can imagine. At last. Welcome, Neo. As you no doubt have guessed, I am Morpheus. It's an honor to meet you. No. The honor is mine. Please, come, sit. I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice, tumbling down the rabbit hole. Hmm? You could say that. I can see it in your eyes. You have the look of a man who accepts what he sees because he is expecting to wake up. Ironically, this is not far from the truth. Do you believe in fate, Neil? No. Why not? Because I don't like the idea that I'm not in control of my life. I know exactly what you mean. Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. Do you know what I'm talking about? Matrix. Do you want to know what it is? The Matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now, in this very room. You can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. 
It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? That you are a slave, Neo. Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more.